here live all across the internet where you can find us. We should be live on Periscope, on Facebook, almost live on Twitch, almost live on YouTube. Thank you so much, everyone, for tuning in this morning. My name is Patrick. I work at the aquarium here in social media. Joining me shortly will be Emily. She's making sure that Instagram folks are aware of this amazing happening that we have right now happening off the back deck, which is that we have the king tide right now a 6.4 foot high tide above the mean high tide level and as you can see our aquarium is currently being engulfed by the pacific ocean we are a literal monterey bay aquarium right now instead of just the literal monterey bay aquarium that we usually are you can see there uh, on the other side of where we're standing that the water is lapping at the steps uh almost Coming up there to the second level there, our great tide pool is no longer a tide pool, it is in fact a direct connection to the Monterey Bay. And what we're looking at right now with this king tide is, oh, there goes a big wave right there, Paul, you can see that rolling on in the effect that just a small little two foot wave can have as it rolls in here, pouring the ocean into our facilities there. The king tides that we're looking at here, um, that is sort of a new term. And king tide essentially is uh, one of the biggest spring tides that we have. And to tell us a little bit more about spring and neap tides, we now have Emily. Emily, good morning. good morning. Good uh, morning. Good morning, everyone. Thanks for joining us and kind of waking up with Patrick oh, and I. Got as a, we're uh, got a little bit of a uh, spotty connection, it would oh seem, boy. there on our cam here. We're just gonna we're just gonna disconnect and reconnect here real quick. And uh, we'll just put ourselves on screen here just for a quick second there. Uh, hello, everyone. Good to see you. We've got a little bit of glitchiness happening there from our uh, main camera. Let's see if we disconnect. We're going to try the tried and true, unplug it, and then plug it back and in. And plug it back in. We will see if that works. Uh, let's see. Let's transition us here onto the screen, Emily. Let's say hello to all the good folks that are out there. Thank you so much, everyone for tuning in. Uh, again, my name is Patrick. This is Emily. Oh, there we go. We got the connection back. Perfect. There we go. Nicely done. Okay, let's head like over I to said, your tried and true. Tried and true. You yeah. know, turn it off, turn it back on. Uh, and that is not what's happening here with the ocean. The ocean is a continual process. It never turns off. And right now, Emily, we have something really incredible happening. Uh, we've got a massive spring tide, this king tide. Can you tell us what astronomically is going on right now uh, as we've got the sun peeking out from behind us there? Yeah. The sun the sun knows what's going on, and the, yeah. moon is, the moon is playing some tricks, too. Tell us about what's going on so, uh, uh, right now yeah. with those king tides. Where we are in relation to the sun is actually really important for what is happening. So because right now the Earth is as close to the sun as it is going to be in our yearly orbit around our big beautiful star and because we have the moon at its perigree it's a nice big full moon right now that full moon is nice and close to the earth the sun and the earth are nice and close together as well and the sun and the moon are what normally cause our tides when we're really close to them that gravitational pull of those two big beautiful celestial bodies actually makes those tides even better bigger and so that is where we're getting this king tide from we're really close to the sun we have this full moon that's nice and close to the earth so the difference between the high and the low tide is huge right now right. Patrick exactly so if you folks watched our broadcast yesterday evening you may have seen that it was incredibly low tide here off of the back deck it was a negative one foot from the mean tide level and what we have right now is 6.4 feet and actually uh Exactly what the time, time is it's it going to be? Nine ten, so two minutes away. Two minutes from away, the everybody. High tide. From, <laughs> from the highest high tide. When that happens, we'll we'll take us off screen there. But we're two minutes away there from that highest high tide. And again, it's about a dance of the star and the moon. So the moon is usually the one that does most of the work in terms of moving the tides around because it is so much closer. But the sun, it's no slouch in the gravity department. And so it is also pulling on that ocean. And effectively, the tides are a global wave that travel around the planet. Depending on where you are, it can cause extremely high tides. We had someone on Twitter comment that in the Bay of Fundy and in the Sea of Cortez, you can have 30 foot tidal swings 
uh, really, really incredible. Here, we tend to have about an eight foot swing uh, or seven and a half feet right now with this, and that's pretty big. Usually it's about a six foot swing. And we have two highs and two lows every day here in Monterey. We have a high, high tide. We have a low, high tide. We have a high, low tide. And we have a low, low tide. And so this right now is the high, high tide. And besides just the regular tides that are happening, again, that proximity to the sun, the moon and the sun pulling in the same direction gives you these king tides. Uh, so totally normal, totally something that we expect to see. But Emily, the important thing for the folks that are tuning in about these king tides here is that you may have heard of sea level rise you're looking at a future of sea level rise right here the king tides are a really mm -hmm. good way to just see just with what the ocean is normally doing imagine if this was the zero tide line and then the tides went up and down from here if it went up 7.4 feet from right here we'd basically be the monterey bay aquarium snorkeling expedition tour here so tell us a little bit about this California King Tides project and the future of sea level rise that we're kind of pre-visualizing right now thanks to these King Tides. Yeah, so if you want to be a little bit of a, a citizen scientist out there and you happen to live here in California, one way that you can help out if you're along the coast is just by going outside over the next couple of days and taking pictures of what it looks like around you. Uh, by taking those pictures at high tide and low tide, we can kind of get an idea of what that future of the ocean might look like as sea level rises as the ocean as you mentioned before we have this thermal expansion happening in the ocean that you know just as those mo water molecules warm up they take up more space they're dancing around they're dancing going around, crazy in going there going back and uh, forth yeah. <laughs> going yep. back and mm -hmm. forth uh, and so because of that we're seeing that these high tides of the king tides is like you said patrick kind of being going to be that average mean tide mm -hmm. um as as climate change oh, affects and, our planet and emily here we have little, we little, have a small wave but folks, wave there. Wa but watch it flow in here and uh, it's just going to roll up here along the edge of the aquarium on the old foundation oh. of the hovden cannery there and that's just a tiny tiny wave so sometimes we get really big waves coming in through here so that sea level rise you know it might not seem oh you know that my this this cliff is way higher than that but then you got to factor in okay the water is up that high and then mm -hmm. move that water around with swell with storms with low pressure systems you know those storms that come through that can uh make effects of the tides even stronger and more uh visual so it's not just oh it's up a little bit more feet it's just okay then add all of the stuff that the ocean is always doing and it can have some pretty drastic consequences exactly and if you're looking at the screen right now uh over on i think i'm going to try and get it right on this side uh of, of the screen you're going to see that staircase leading up to the deck of the aquarium from the great tide pool that we're looking over right now you can see the difference between where the concrete is wet and the concrete is dry on that staircase and like you mentioned patrick like these are pretty small swells that we have right now coming in not too huge of waves but that wave is already reaching almost the bottom of our deck right there right. Um, so you can imagine if we were having a big storm right now uh, those swells would cause waves that were even bigger and you know we'd see water up here on the deck with us that's right, right yeah and where, where we're standing there's a splash guard right below us so uh, we're basically looking directly out here um, for those of you watching the broadcast I just uh, turned us off there so you can see what Emily was saying where that water is at our pump house is just like a peninsula out there in uh, in the Monterey Bay right now. And where we're standing, we have a splash guard. Every once in a while, we have to close the back deck when the big waves roll through, splashing up here. So again, that sea level rise, you know, you hear about these things in, in the news and uh, we're not here trying to scare anyone about uh, about the the future there of sea level rise it's just kind of one of those facts of life the sea levels have been rising for a long time they're rising right now uh thanks to a lot of human impacts that are really going to impact the humans that are here along the along the coast and especially you know we here at the monterey bay aquarium 
we're we're an aquarium right there on the water and as you can see we are slowly being reclaimed there by the ocean so it's something that we wanted to bring up and talk about because these are the things that we think about you know often climate change sea level rise ocean acidification all of those sort of they seem like wonky scientific processes that are just happening in theory but we can tell you here at the aquarium that at least when it comes to sea level rise on this day you can see here that king tide this is pretty much what's projected to to happen here uh regardless of any any other inputs there so uh we here at the aquarium are are you know, we're directly connected to the ocean. We want to talk about conservation issues, but we also are going to use this King Tides Day to really point out this is what we mean by what sea level rise could look like. It's not a theory. It's, it's occurring as we speak. And in the next 30, 40, 50 years, these King Tides, if we're still doing live streams, uh, they are going to be, we might be doing holographic live streams at that point. Uh, <laughs> we you got to perfect the uh, scuba live stream. Right, yeah, there, you'd be yeah. able to stand here with us and probably see underwater where, where, thing, where things change. So it is something that we think about a lot here at the aquarium because we are so intimately tied to the ocean and these King Tides that you're seeing here today. Again, just a really good snapshot in the present of the future and something to think about as we uh, talk to our legislators as we think about being involved in our community when it comes to uh, fixing climate related woes that uh, that humans have caused these are the kinds of things you can just think about okay that if we don't want the aquarium underwater this is why I'm gonna go and uh, and and do work in my community for for the ocean there well yeah and you know we're fortunate here uh, where the aquarium is located that you know, we're on these big pillars. It helps us stay up and out of the ocean. We have kind of this larger change between, uh, you know, where we are and as the seafloor changes out there in the ocean, it gets pretty deep pretty quickly compared to some areas, which, uh, you know, you have these low lying islands out there. You have places along the East Coast that are much flatter. And so these king tides really affect those places. Yes. Mm -hmm. Very, very, very harshly. Um, so when we're thinking about infrastructure, when we think about all these people who rely on the coast, who live near the coast as their home, as their livelihood, you know, these are the communities that we're thinking about with these, you know, king yep. tides and with the change in the sea level over time. Exactly right. Yeah, it, it, it's uh, it's difficult sometimes, you know, we're, we're here. It's, this is just a really cool natural phenomenon that we're pointing out, but these are going to affect a lot of people uh, today uh, up and down the coast of California and all around the world where the king tides are going to have that bigger swing or that, that larger impact. So, um, it, you know, not to be glib or anything, this is obviously very, very cool here, but you make a good point, Emily, that when we see these effects, when we see these things happening, it means real change happening in some people uh, as we have this big wave here rolling through. <laughs> you can see it splashing up underneath the deck. These are these are real things that that are occurring, and uh, some people today are not going to be enjoying the king tides. It's going to be a, a big deal for them. We here at the aquarium can at least point out, hey, this is what we mean when we're out there. Our mission is to inspire conservation of the ocean. These king tides, that natural phenomenon of the stars dancing around us, the moon doing its thing, moving around the earth, pulling on the ocean when the sun and moon are working together, uh, and the earth is as close as it can be to those effects. We get these really cool king tide events with extremely low tides, extremely high tides, uh, but something to consider that when the ocean moves, whatever the ocean is doing, it has a real effect on people all around the world. The ocean is the heart of our planet's life support system. It's what moves energy all throughout the globe. It's what makes life possible here. So if you see something happening in the ocean, just remind yourself, oh, okay, something is happening all across the planet, something to be, to be, uh, to be thoughtful of. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, we've been talking about the California King Tides project here. There might be projects in your local area, too, that are monitoring these king tides to see the effect that it's going to have in communities as sea level changes. So yeah. check out and see if there's any other citizen scientist projects out there. You know, we try and keep track of the ones happening in our local area, uh, but they're happening all over the globe, too. So check yeah. those out. And I'm uh, sorry, everybody. I'm going to do my best to stand here in <laughs> front of the sun front now. Of the but sun, yeah. but. No, the, 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 we can just I, say that. I we like what Sarah said. It's highlighting our shining personalities. That's it, a nice comment to wake up to. Thanks, it Sarah. Is. We, and also, just from a scientific standpoint, it's totally planned to have our major uh, star there that is helping to cause these king tides right now. They're in frame. We want all the cast of characters. The moon could not be uh, could not be found here to be on camera today. Hard <laughs> at work pulling on the ocean with all of its massive might out there in the space 
Well, uh, are let's... there king tides on the East Coast? James yes. on Facebook would mm-hmm. like to know. Yeah, so king tides are happening all over the planet right now. Um, king tides is actually a fairly recent term for a phenomenon that's been happening for millennia, uh, and so it's just uh, this news term. I actually just read yesterday. It came from um, Australia, and New Zealand. They came up with the term king tides. Oh, really? So nice. Keeping them at the front of the mind right now for a couple of reasons. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, to all of our folks down there affected by the wildfires. Uh, hearts here at the aquarium go out to everybody there uh, in Australia. Uh, and uh, let's see, do we have we have a few more questions here? Uh, what are the plans to move the aquarium? Uh, that's a very good question. Uh, those are plans that are being thought of. Uh, whether or not we need to move up or over, um, things to consider uh, here. Fortunately, like Emily was mentioning, our coastline is pretty resilient as far as the rocky nature, the deep water just off offshore. Um, so we got a little bit of time here, but uh, certainly the aquarium is 35 yeah. years old. And when the aquarium turns 70, it will have been a conversation uh, that will have had a decision made there. And uh, I like that you mentioned before in different places around the world, you know, here we're seeing this you know 7.8 foot difference between the highest high tide and the lowest low tides of our king tides this year in january but in other places that can be really exaggerated like the bay of fundy like the gulf of california um when i was in college i actually did research down in the gulf of california and during these king tides uh, because it's much flatter out there uh, you could you know see the change in the tide and go walk out on these you know, big plateaus of mm-hmm. sand that would normally be a couple of feet underwater, but you could walk a mile or so out into the bay. Uh, so go out there. If you are near the shore, go and see what the king tides look like in your local area. Uh, but be safe while you're doing yep. it. We talked a little bit about that yesterday as well. Always face the ocean. Never turn your back on the ocean because especially as these big, big waves and these big changes in the sea level are, you know, and the tides are, are changing right now, uh, those tides can really sneak up on you. So just be safe if you're out there exploring. Yeah, absolutely. Emily, that's, that's a really, really great point uh to whenever you go to the ocean it is a wild unpredictable place and the ocean is just going to do its thing we are guests whenever we go there um so always have a buddy if you're on the shore face the ocean don't turn your back on it and follow any posted signs uh we have a lot of crew out there especially here in california california state parks lots of different folks there working in public works making sure that the public is safe so if you see signs anything like that the Instagram photo is not worth it. <laughs> Stay back, enjoy the ocean, and uh, just follow any posted things that you may see out there. Uh, but with that, Emily, I mean, it is 922, so we are 11 minutes past the king tide. We're looking at a prince tide and <laughs> uh, uh, eventually maybe a vassal tide. Um, and so as it retreats out, we can just be... Uh, oh, the thing that I love when I think about the tides is just knowing that we are in this big cosmic dance in our solar system as we go around the sun as the moon uh, goes around the earth and we just get to see these real effects of the physics that you learn in school of those documentaries of seeing everything that's happening out there in the solar system Uh, but bringing it back home the inner space of planet earth is deeply connected to the stars and uh, looking over our great tide pool currently a part of the ocean because of those the sun and the moon doing their thing always reminded the Steinbeck quote of it's advisable to look from the tide pool to the stars and then back to the tide pool again that's my favorite part here of uh, of these king tides it's just that that reminder of how connected we are to the big picture exactly yeah okay well I believe with that everybody we are going to sign off right uh, now unless you have any more pressing questions but thank you so much everyone for tuning in emily any any final thoughts i i just took the conclusion <laughs> for myself just ran with i it. just That's ran okay. i just ran with it i just That's felt okay. i felt i felt the movement uh emily do you have any uh parting words uh for us about the king tides for yourself no it, like we were talking about before this is happening all over the world if you happen to me near the coastline go and check it out um take a picture of what's happening in your area mm-hmm. and be safe out there and enjoy this wonderful dance of our celestial bodies out there. Absolutely. All right, everyone. Well, thank you so much for being a part of the Monterey Bay Aquarium community. Uh, We hope you have a fantastic rest of your day, wherever you are around the world, and we will see 
you again soon here at the Monterey Bay Aquarium. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, everyone.